Well, good morning, and thank you all for being here. Uh, I'm Will Grimsley, former Secretary of Veterans Affairs, soldier, um, and proud to be now back here at the State House to talk about something that's very important to our state and our nation, and that is the readiness of our kids to be productive citizens of South Carolina and the United States, and more specifically with regard to why we're here today, giving them the opportunity, the, the ability, of the eligibility to serve in the, one of the uniforms of the United States, uh, active guard or reserve. And so we got a challenge here. Uh, 330 million citizens of the United States, 5.2 million, million citizens of South Carolina. And we're at the point now in our society uh, where only about 23%, so 23 out of 100, of young men or women in the eligible age range to either get an appointment to a service academy, an ROTC scholarship, enlist or get a warrant to serve are eligible to serve, 23%. And that's a telling statistic for a nation this large that enjoys an all-volunteer force across our active guard and reserve components of all six services. And so what does that mean? <clears throat> well, we have young men and women who today, across society, uh, can't serve for three big reasons. First off is they have some behavioral challenge. That means they've been arrested and convicted of something, or they've got, you know, we call them military bad paper. <clears throat> and so they can't serve there. The second one is um, that they have trouble getting to the minimum standard of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, the ASVAB, the test that we give to gauge their ability to learn and apply that learning and intellect in a military uh, job. The third one, and perhaps the, <clears throat> well, it is the biggest challenge of all, is they can't pass the physical standards. They can't pass the minimum standards. Uh, it's childhood obesity. It's for a variety of reasons. It's the inability to perform exercises to a very low minimum standard and to the point where it would be difficult to even bring them in and have them go through the eight or 10 or 12 or 13 week basic training across any of the services to be able to put on a uniform and go out into the fleet on, an air, on, a, on a tarmac or out in a formation somewhere to then serve. <clears throat> That's a challenge. It's a challenge today, and if this trend continues, what we're going to have in the future generations of an all-volunteer force is no force. And so when you think about the national security implications to the United States of America and the inability of young men and women to serve the nation in this way, uh, we, we think we've reached a point where it's time to stand up and do something about it. And so there are about 800 of my friends. Uh, that means, well, I got... I don't have 800 friends, perhaps, but 800 other people who are privileged to be flag officers. That's admirals in the Navy or Coast Guard and generals in the uh, Army, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Space Force who have signed on to be uh, signatory partners in trying to turn the tide of this and attacking this on a broad front. There's some immediate actions that we're looking at, and then there's some long-term generational changes that we think we can do through changes in policy, changes in procedure, looking at ways of legislation, but perhaps just getting people more involved, and that's everybody across the nation, parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, to people who have served, people who are serving of all ranks, and to bring them all together to be able to do that. <clears throat> but today we're here because we think we have an opportunity here in South Carolina to really lead in the forefront of this. We already contribute a higher number per capita, I believe, of anybody of the services than any other state in the union. So. We're a proud military state, and we know that. So let's continue to pile on that. Let's build on that success and bring South Carolina into the forefront to, to, to continue to attack uh, challenges in early childhood education, pre-K all the way to K through 12, to educational standards, to physical fitness standards, to the introduction of civics, to getting uh, veteran mentors, perhaps, to work with young people in ways, and to really go after combating some of these challenges in ways that build on existing programs and maybe can pile on in new ways you know, and opportunities to do that. So uh, we appreciate this opportunity to be able to, to uh, do this. We've asked the governor to support, and no big surprise, he was the first guy in line to help us work this on behalf of the state. And we've been meeting with members of the General Assembly and others across the cabinet agencies and others to be able to bring this to bear on behalf of this great state. And so we appreciate uh, your being there. And as I said, there is no greater advocate in this state for service uh, for the people of the, of the state of South Carolina and the propensity of them to continue to lead the nation than our chief executive. And so it's my honor to introduce him now, our governor, Henry McMaster. Thank you. Thank you, General. Yes, sir. Mission readiness, those are, those are great words, and we need to be ready <clears throat> in the, the large picture. Uh, you know that we are booming economically, people from all over the 
world want to hire our people to, to, do, to work in their factories, their plants. Our businesses are growing. We're really having a great economic boom right now. But it's always about the people. And part of being about the people is the health and vitality of the people. So we know we have to educate our people. We know we have to train them. We know we have to keep them safe. That's why we're doing the things that we do. We also know that we are the, the most pro-military state in the country. We have veterans coming from all over to live here. That's why we eliminate, one reason we eliminated the income tax on veterans' retirement pay, because veterans are good people. A lot, often they are entering their second careers in the prime of their lives, and they contribute greatly, greatly to our strength. But our people have to be strong. And as you, you've noticed, uh, not as many people are getting involved in PE classes. We, we have workout uh, places all over town. A lot of people go, a lot of people don't. But as General Grimsley just said, 77% of our young people are unable to pass the physical, the PT test to get into the military. Now that, that just, uh, that doesn't make good sense. So a part of this exercise is to call this to the attention of the people. That there's a great world out there waiting for us, for the people of South Carolina, but we've got to be in shape, we've got to be educated, we've got to be trained, and we have to be healthy. So th this readiness mission with 800 admirals and generals from the military, and remember we have eight military bases in South Carolina, for them to get together to spearhead this, to bring the issue to the forefront, and to provide answers and ways, means to fix this is a great thing. So we're delighted to do that uh, here in South Carolina. And so I have a proclamation. And it reads as follows. And let me mention this. There was a General Mark Clark, who was a four-star general in World War II, later president of the Citadel before General Grimsley's daddy was president of the Citadel. And he said that there's more patriotism per square inch in South Carolina than any place in the world. And also, not long ago, I was speaking to an Army general who was in charge of recruitment. And as you know, a lot of the, the services are not meeting, they're having difficulty meeting their recruitment goals. But he said if it, if it were up to him and the, and the Army would let him, he could fill his recruitment goals from five southern states, one being South Carolina. That means that the, the interest is there, but what we have to do is see that that interest is able to be fulfilled. Every year, I send letters to the graduating high school students, urging them to remember that they have opportunities. One is to go to work, one is to continue their education, either at technical college or four-year college. Our technical colleges are best in the world. Our four-year schools are, are terrific and getting even stronger and stronger. But also I mentioned there that the military is available for them. And we want them to consider that because if we're going to be a strong state and a strong country, our national security is dependent on having young people who are ready, willing, and able to join our military. So the proclamation reads as follows. State of South Carolina, Governor's Proclamation. The strength of our country depends on a robust and well-prepared military. And whereas the U.S. Department of Defense has reported that nationally 77% of our youth between the ages of 17 and 24 cannot qualify for military service for reasons ranging from cognitive challenges to poor physical health to social factors. And whereas this figure represents an alarming increase from previous years posing ever greater dangers to our national security and whereas a strong military requires healthy, educated young people available, willing, and able to serve. And whereas extensive research shows that much of children's crucial early development takes place from the time they are born through three years old. And whereas Mission Readiness is a bipartisan national nonprofit group of more than 800 retired admirals and generals from all branches of the armies of the country's armed services a membership organization that formed in 2009, and whereas Mission Readiness members are determined to make sure that the youth of South Carolina and our nation do not fall behind but spend their formative years eating well, being active, learning, and developing crucial skills, and whereas these skills are necessary for success in school and then for whatever path our youth choose after graduation, whether it involves further education, workforce entry, or military service. And whereas mission readiness has been present in South Carolina, 
educating the public on responsible policies and programs that will help nourish, teach, and prepare our young people for successful lives. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim October 11, 2023, as Mission Readiness Day throughout the state and encourage all South Carolinians to support mission readiness in their efforts to make our nation stronger by ensuring that young people stay in school, stay fit, and stay out of trouble. Signed by me, Henry McMaster, your proud, happy governor on behalf of 5.2 million proud, happy South Carolinians. General. How about a picture? Thank you, sir. Got that? It's okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor. On behalf of my outstanding teammate, Kim Russell, and the entire Mission Readiness team, thank you again, Governor McMaster, for this incredible honor, sir. It's humbling for Mission Readiness to be recognized in such a manner and helps highlight two very important things. First, it pays tribute to the exceptional patriotism and volunteer work of Mission Readiness members like General Grimsley and the more than 800 other retired admirals and generals and top military leaders across the nation. Every day, they selflessly leverage their more than 25,000 years of combined military service to ensure America's youth have every opportunity to succeed in life including serving their nation in uniform. Second, it recognizes the need for all of us to come together and achieve unity of effort to address the root causes of military ineligibility. Thanks to the leadership exhibited by the governor, members of his cabinet and staff, members of the legislature, along with the societal, economic, and historical power source that the military represents across this great state, we know that South Carolina is optimally positioned to help solve this national security issue and establish the standard for the rest of the nation to follow. We stand ready to support evidence-based investments in early childhood care and education programs that help get kids off to the right start in life. Physical education and nutrition programs in schools that help children and adolescents develop healthy habits. And after school and summer learning programs that help youth engage in enriching activities like STEM while also being physically active on a daily basis. We look forward to the privilege of working together alongside many other organizations and leaders to help prepare youth across South Carolina to be ready and able to serve their nation in any way they choose. On behalf of the entire Mission Readiness team, thanks again to Governor McMaster, General Grimsley, our allies and partners across the state for this humbling honor and happy Mission Readiness Day to all. All right, so the governor's <clears throat> giving me leash here to, ask, to let you all ask questions if you have any questions for us. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, I'll let the real resident experts, but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there are a lot of ways to do this and childhood activity and childhood nutrition are at the beginning. And so there have been pretty significant strides in the General Assembly and others to provide things like universal school lunch that, you know, that bill is, is moving forward as well. Um, but there are programs that already exist, perhaps that people aren't taking advantage of. So it really starts and ends with local solutions. So um, nationally, even statewide, we can provide some overarching guidance, but it, it's gonna take action down at the local level. So think about school districts and sometimes even mom and dads, but especially in our less enfranchised, disenfranchised and rural counties, this is gonna be a big challenge. Well, it is a big challenge and it's gonna to continue to be a big challenge. So I think that uh, first step is gather the data better and then find best practices from other states that have done this pretty well, that have experience doing this. And then figure out how do we adapt that to the culture and organization of South Carolina as it is. And I'll, Jake or Kim. Thank you. The only thing I would add is there are um, some really cool best practices across the state. 80, about 80 schools were recently recognized as 
uh, representative of America's healthiest schools across the state. So part of what we want to do is uplift those best practices and shine a brighter light on them so that if there's a school program that's um, engaged in physical activity programming, uh, also activity breaks throughout the day, and traditional recess and combining those opportunities together to allow kids to move um, and get their minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity on a daily basis, we want to make sure that we highlight those and, and share those best practices across the state. Yeah, a lot of our focus is in early childhood education. You know, if you can set those good habits and examples early on through high quality programming, they inevitably transfer over into the K through 12 environment and a young person has more opportunities for success. Yeah, public, private, bringing everybody together to think about ways that we can do this together. It's going to require unity of effort. And it's more than uh, the Department of Education and school districts are a big part, but social services and health and human services and, you know, uh, public health uh, administrations and organizations and nonprofits across the state. This really does require a team effort of, of everybody. And I was over at Secretary McCaffrey's shop with General Jones earlier as well. You know, this is really a workforce issue as well because we're talking about getting kids ready to just be bigger kids, to be bigger kids, to be adults maybe serve in the military, but ultimately we all leave the military, you know, whether it's three years or 50 years, and then we're going to come back and then we, we want them to be productive members of the workforce too. So we're really talking about a longitudinal exercise for a lifetime here, and it's how do we course correct perhaps some of the challenges that we face and that we're seeing it manifest in the propensity or ability to serve. How do we do that in just the ability to live a thriving, healthy life, whether you serve or not? So this is really, which is part of national security too, whether you serve in uniform, I mean, National security is really hinged on a healthy population that's economically viable. So anyway, we're very excited about this. All right, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, so you know the, the, the federal fiscal year just ended on the 30th of September, and the Marine Corps and the Space Force met their uh, enlistment, their recruitment goals. The Army, the Navy, and the Air Force did not. And this is the second year in a row, certainly for the Army, um, and I'm not sure about Navy and Air Force, I don't remember now, but, but, but regardless, you know, it's the joint force that suffers here, because we need all of us, all six of us giving way together. And so if one falls short, somebody's got to pick up that slack, and it's not a one-for-one -one fit. Um, so we, we need to really attack this across the front. And it's all three components, too. It's active guard and reserve. So, you know, we have a really strong, important reserve component here between the Guard and the Reserve Forces um, that we need to make sure that we fill those ranks with the right people the right way as well. Um, so it, it and, and I'll just say that the, the future soldier preparatory course that's running at Fort Jackson is a big component of this, but that's really reactive. That's getting the kids at the, you know, just graduated from high school or you know, that's waiting until, you know, the duck's already flying past you almost before you're shooting at it. And so we need to still do that because that's important, to get, get, gets kids who want to serve, who already have shown a desire to serve, get them to you know, the requisite minimum ability to serve. But we really got to get after the pool, and we got to make sure the pool is filled, and the way to get the pool filled is start before they, you know, pre-kindergarten start, if that makes sense. It's in the... No, it's one of the components that precludes you from serving. And it's the age range of 17 to 24, which is the largest pool. That's the, that's the biggest pool of citizens from which we pull every year. I mean, you can, still serve, you can still enlist after 24, but the vast majority of our enlistees, certainly kids going to college, um, who are applying for service academy appointments or ROTC scholarships are in the 17 to 24 range. And I think I'm, I think I'm right when I say that when you do the math on that, it comes down to about half a million, 500,000, I think, across the nation. Yeah, out of 330 million Americans. So it's a, it's a really small number. We just need to grow the available pool. It's the same group being competed from all, all sectors. Yeah, 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 same people you, that college, you know, the colleges are looking for, the firefighters and police forces and sheriff's departments and, and emergency medical services. I mean, we all kind of pull from the same 
sort of challenge. Yeah. I'd make one comment here. I think, you know, this, this statistic of 77 percent of American youth being unable to serve because of one of those three conditions, I think is a statistic most Americans aren't aware of. And here in South Carolina aren't aware of. So, you know, part of this challenge, this is a strategic issue that is hiding in plain sight. And the fact that most people don't recognize that such a small percentage of our youth are eligible for service um, is, is a sobering statistic that most people are unaware of. So I think this, this sheds light on that statistic and also puts in programs and initiatives to address it. And I think that's, that's the value in the mix, which is I think why both uh, General Jones, myself, and two departments are very supportive of this issue and really appreciate the work that General Grimsley and Jake and the team have done here and certainly the governor's support for this issue across the uh, state. I don't know if it's, first of all, I think, you know, across the, across the agencies in South Carolina, this is, I would argue, this is of interest to every agency in South Carolina. This is not isolated to one department or the other. This is across the state government. Because, it, because again, it's, it's, a, it's a rising tide that floats all boats, if you, can, if you can address this statistic. You know, part of the role that our department will specifically play is, is broadening the focus from just veterans who traditionally are associated with once you leave military service to recognizing every veteran started off as a child. And so the reality is if you want to grow the pool of potential candidates for military service and also improve and, and highlight the propensity to serve in South Carolina, which is deep already, those are the two critical factors. Pool of applicants, propensity to serve, join those together, and there's opportunities to increase both the workforce, support the military, and frankly support all what we're trying to do here in South Carolina writ large. Thank you very much.